Coming up on this week's episode of 4040 Shorts, we cover Kevin Durant's dramatic decision during the 2016 offseason to join the Golden State Warriors and how things could have gone much differently. But first, a word from our sponsors. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of 4040 Shorts from the 4040 Vision podcast. I'm your host, Colette Abdallah, and on today's episode, we'll be resharing a clip from the first episode we ever recorded, and that was the top five Golden State Warriors what-ifs. So in this particular podcast, we'll be talking about what Kevin Durant could have done a little bit differently in 2016, what the impact would have been on his career if he had perhaps chosen to join the Boston Celtics, the Cleveland Cavaliers, or a number of other teams as well. So we're really excited to bring this back to you, and we hope you check out the full episode, which is available on all of the major podcasting platforms. So wherever you listen to this one, make sure to scroll down a bit, go back to episode one, and that is, again, the top five what-if moments in Golden State Warriors history. It's got plenty of great nuggets it's featuring me and my co-host, Osama Dahoud. So please make sure you check that out. So obviously the, the summer of 2016, uh, the famous Kevin Durant chase, um, you know, after the, uh, the 3-1 uh, collapse, uh, KD is being courted by every, you know, contender in the NBA, you know, LeBron's calling him, the Celtics send out the, the red carpet, they have Tom Brady call him, everything, everyone pulls out all the stops. And then we have the famous meeting, you know, the Hamptons five meeting where, uh, you know, the, the Warriors come out, Curry, Draymond, Iguodala, Clay, and they convince him. Uh, you know, to ultimately choose the Warriors. But I think what was the really interesting alternative here is he was reportedly really close to choosing Boston instead. Um, and I feel like that in itself, obviously, you know, the Warriors would have would have still been a, a power in the West. Um, but what's really important is that the overall impact on Kevin Durant's career and perhaps his his mental health is like his own state of mind, right? Because he goes from the Warriors where he's, you know, doesn't have his own team. He's still secondary to Steph in the fans' minds, blah, blah, blah. He gets his own team in Boston. He's the alpha dog, right? Jalen Brown and uh, Jason Tatum are not challenging this guy for control of the team. And you wonder, like, would, would KD actually be happy there? And perhaps, like, does he retire a Celtic? And, you know, yeah, any, any, you know, any thoughts on that one? I know you didn't have this one as your number two, but. Yeah, yeah. It's I think KD as his own category in general is interesting to explore. It's hard. He's such a misery uh, in, online, at least. It's hard to see him happy. I think he likes to play it off and fan engagement is fun and all. And, and maybe to some degree, he just lives to uh, he lives for that kind of uh, that energy, to so to speak. He He admitted to the Warriors losing in the finals being very much easier on his decision um, before. I think Jerry West ended up being the call that kind of uh, eased his conscience a little bit because Jerry West said, look, man, I lost in the finals a million times. And if I could take it all back, I'd find a way to, to win every one of those goddamn series. So you had this one ranked, right? But not where, where did you have this one ranked for yourself? I had this one ranked, I think at number five, just because there were so many other things I wanted to explore. Um, I think that what made this interesting is Clay Thompson's game six. This, I thought we were done. Like at the time, like I was pulling my hair out. I was like, my God, this beautiful season is over. I hate Kevin Durant. I'm so, I was so scared of playing him. I actually wanted to play San Antonio because I was so mortified of, of Kevin Durant that season. So, you know, game six, Clay happens overcome a 3-1 lead, blow a 3-1 lead, and that's what made it possible. So I think your Boston scenario is more so likely to happen if the Warriors win the finals. I think that makes it a little more, that increases the percentage of it happening. Because then, I mean, the way this is discussed is just the most exhausted conversation in social, on NBA Twitter, just taking the easy path and winning a real ring. It's disgusting, you know. Hashtag rings, all that. All that, rings with a Z at the end and all (laughs) that. Yeah, all that shit. Uh, But the Warriors winning is a more interesting caveat because if they do win, like you said, there's a chance he still shamelessly goes, I'm still going there. I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. 
But I remember that kind of Kevin Durant sweepstakes. There was like someone leaked that the Clipper he was blown away by the Clippers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and deny, and denying that the <laughs> owner uh, Steve Ballmer was was reportedly in tears. You know, painting the vision of you know taking over LA with with KD by his side. Uh, a lot of great memes from that one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's what, what's really interesting. I mean. Other than the impact on the Warriors, I think um, it, it, it shifts the balance of power in the East, right? I mean, you still have, obviously, LeBron and the Cavs. You have the Sixers are kind of middling at this point. Giannis is, is up and coming. So LeBron, for the most part, is, has an unimpeded path to the finals every year after that because there's no one really in the East to challenge him. So what happens if, you know, instead of playing – Jalen Jason and Marcus Smart, he's playing Jalen Jason and Kevin Durant. You know, is oh. are do we get the Cavs Warriors, you know, the the series of, you know, the the four the four straight finals. So Yeah, he does. It's basically LeBron joins the East again, right? Someone who's his equal kind of in kind of default. It's like the Warriors Cavs era was like there's a baby coming and everyone knows the name of that baby and what gender that baby is and everything. And the name of that baby was Warriors Cavs, one, two, three, and four, right? It was- Everyone, they, they tried to deny it. You had the hipsters talking about Utah this and, you know, just, it was, it was, there was the sense of inevitability and people tried to push back against it and it just, it wasn't happening. It would have been beautiful schematically. He'd spoken of uh, what Brad Stevens' schemes defensively were like against him. He was a, quite the compliment to, um, what Brad Stevens did when defensively scheming against Kevin Durant. And he liked that when they showed him uh, in the meetings, like, here's what we would do if you were here. Jay Crowder famously said, we showed him everything, which is very naive of him to say. But uh, nonetheless, I think that they would have absolutely been a pain in the ass for the Cavs. Uh, they might have had, LeBron might have done some other shifts. Um Maybe Kawhi Leonard doesn't go to, to well, Kawhi Leonard was traded to Toronto, but maybe that isn't as, as clear cut. The East definitely would have been uh, the more dominant conference. All it takes is one player to make the East look like a complete, you know, nightmare for everybody else. So I think that KD choosing Boston was also something that I, I remember thinking about this once upon a time and the only other shameless choice he would have made is joining Cleveland. Um, but, but Boston, I think, is the highest likelihood of happening. Yeah, I, I mean, he said after the decision, I mean, several months later, I think that he was not going to join the winning team. Basically, he wasn't going to be, you know, obviously it's one thing that, that the Warriors beat the, the Thunder, but to join the winning team was like, all right, like it's a, it's a little too much for him, at least in his mind, um, even though he probably would have faced the same criticism either way, really. So uh, do you think he's still a Boston Celtic if, if he makes that decision? It's five years out. Is he still there? Does he retire or something? No, I don't think so. He he seems to be one of these players that doesn't really have a loyalty to a specific team. I mean, once upon a time, maybe you think that, right? But we've kind of gotten to know him a little bit. He quietly signed his first extension on a napkin or something. He didn't announce it. He it was like a no-brainer in Oklahoma City. Uh, but as we've gotten to know him and how frustrating the idea of legacy is, um, if he doesn't win a championship in Boston, for the sake of example, he's absolutely out of there, right? Um, so either way, whether they win or not, I think he leaves. Yeah, no, that, that's totally fair. And if he does win a championship there, that's when I think he, he sticks around for that legacy reason. Because, you know, you play for one of the prestige franchises, you become one of those those names in the rafters, and that becomes, you know, he's definitely discussed in a much different light by us, you know, peasants on social media. Um, so yeah, it, it's a major, major shift there. Yeah. It's interesting because he won here and he still left and didn't want to stick around. So he's just such a complicated character, but I'd, you'd like to think without all of the toxicity that in, involved his moving here to the Bay area that he'd at least give the Celtics one extension when, after winning a championship. Absolutely. So that was it for our episode for today. We hope you guys enjoyed that uh, repurposing or resharing of a clip from episode one of the 4040 Vision podcast. We hope you guys make sure to uh, follow, to uh, subscribe, to like, to leave us a review on all the major podcasting platforms. 
and make sure to follow us on social media at 4040 Vision Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks, y'all. Peace out.